So, dear students, let's understand the meaning of debentures. Debentures denote borrowing by a company and represent its loan capital. Debenture holders are creditors of the company. A debenture is a document or certificate issued by a company as proof of the money lent to it by the holder. It is an acknowledgement of debt as well as an undertaking to repay the specified sum with interest on or before the prescribed date. A debenture is a certificate issued by a company under its common seal as acknowledgement of debt with or without a charge on company's assets. What do we mean by charge on company's assets? If you do not pay me my money back, I might sell that particular asset and get my money back. Interest on debentures is paid at a fixed rate and it is payable periodically until the maturity and repayment of debentures. Debentures carry no voting rights, but they generally involve a charge on companies' assets, which has been explained already. So, distinction between shares and debentures, dear students, you should read this. Now, let's try and understand what we mean by naked or mortgage debentures. So, naked or simple debentures are not secured as no property is pledged or mortgaged on their issue. There are mere promises to pay. In case of default, the debenture holders can merely sue the company for recovering their money. On the other hand, mortgage or secured debentures are issued by creating a fixed or floating charge on the company's assets. In case the company makes a default in payment, the debenture holders can recover their dues from the mortgaged property. So, you understood the meaning of charge. Now, two types of charges, fixed and floating charge. A fixed charge is created on specific and existing assets of the company. The company cannot dispose of these assets without the consent of the debenture holders. On the other hand, a floating charge is created on both the existing and future assets of the company. A company can use these assets in the ordinary course of business. The charge keeps on fluctuating and becomes fixed when the company goes into liquidation to make default in payment or makes default in payment. Any charge created by a company in the form of debenture holders must be registered. So, I think it's very clear. Fixed charge means when on a specific and an existing assets. Floating charge means it keeps on changing. Nothing to worry. Redeemable and irredeemable debentures. So, when payments would be made or repayable on a predetermined date or at any time 
prior to the maturity at the option of the company. So these are redeemable debentures. But irredeemable or perpetual debentures are repayable only at the time of winding up of the company, when the company is going to shut down. Bearer and registered debentures. Bearer debentures can be transferred by mere delivery as no record of such debentures is kept in the register of debenture holders. Bearer is as simple as a 10 rupee note. Whoever has that 10 rupee note can give to anyone and buy any chocolate or whatever he or she wants to buy. Interest is paid on production of coupons attached to such debentures. No legal formalities are required for the transfer. As I just said, bearer, you 10 rupee note, you just give it to someone, it's a legal tender. And no formal notice or intimation to the company is necessary. But registered debentures are recorded in the register of debenture holders. Interest is payable only to the registered holders. Such debentures can be transferred only by transfer deed or intimation to the company and not mere delivery. So bearer debenture can be transferred just by mere delivery. Next is convertible and non-convertible debentures. Simple hai. If it is converted into equity shares, convertible. After definitely a certain specified period and on certain conditions. So it definitely acts as an incentive to debenture holders who can in course of time participate in profits and management of the company. Non-convertible debentures do not carry any right to be converted into equity shares. So now since you know so much about debentures, advantages, disadvantages you can read. It is very easy. Next topic for the day is loan from commercial banks. So commercial banks usually provide short term finance because most of their deposits are short term deposits. However, in some cases commercial banks also provide term loans for medium and long periods, especially to small scale and medium enterprises. So a term loan a bank advances a fixed amount and lump sum to the borrower for a specific period. The interest is charged at a fixed rate on the sanctioned amount. The loan is advanced against security of some assets or on the personal guarantee of the borrower. So advantages and disadvantages can be read on your own, nothing to explain. Loan from financial institutions. The government of India has set up special institutions in the country to provide long term and medium term finance to business enterprises. These institutions or developmental banks have become a major source of finance for flotation of new concerns as well as for the modernization and expansion of the existing concerns. They provide finance both in the form of equity and debt. These institutions are not simply financial institutions. They also provide promotional, technical and managerial services. They take initiative in locating and filling gaps in the country's industrial structure. IFCI, IDBI, ICICI, SIDBI are well-known development banks in the country. In addition, the LIC, the GIC, the SFCs, NIDC, NSIC, UTI also help in providing finance to industry. These specialized financial institutions have become a biggest source of finance for industries in India. So they have certain advantages 
and of course disadvantages so please dear students go through them generally you get questions on advantages and disadvantages now we come to sources of short term finance number 1 would be public deposits so public deposits refer to the deposits of money made by the public with non banking companies these deposits represent loan from the public including employees and shareholders of the company the system of public deposits originated when banks were not well developed in india so it's an old concept in recent years this source has become popular due to various reasons depositors get a higher rate of interest than that available on bank deposits at the same time companies find it cheaper than loans from banks and financial institutions so merits would be economical simple trading on equity no charge on assets medium term flexibility d merits would be uncertainty limited appeal restrict growth of capital markets non available to new firms and speculation just a small reading is sufficient you will be able to elaborate in your examination next source would be commercial banks where you can take bank credit commercial banks are a major source of short term finance for business in the following ways loans and advances cash credits bank overdraft discounting of bills next would be trade credit trade credit is credit extended by one business firm to another as incidental to sale or purchase of goods and services it is also known as mercantile credit trade credit may be defined as credit extended by sellers to buyers at all levels of production and distribution process down to the retailer it does not include consumer credit or installment credit it arises out of transfer of goods and is unsecured trade credit is usually granted for periods ranging from 15 days to 3 months the buying firm receives supplies without paying immediately trade credit reflects the buyer's power to purchase now and pay later it also indicates the seller's faith in the buyer trade credit is available in the ordinary course of business no security is required for getting it the amount and terms of credit available depend upon the financial strength and goodwill of these buyers the customs of trade the financial resources of the supplier the amount and frequency of purchases degree of competition in the market location of customers the nature of products etc trade credit does not make available the funds in cash very 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 important trade credit may be extended in two forms open account wherein the buyer does not sign any formal debt instrument for example a and company purchases goods on credit from b and company for rupees 50000 on 3 months credit this means that a and company requirement of for working capital for 3 months is reduced to the extent of 50000 because you are getting goods worth 50000 now and you will be paying after 3 months additional credit can be generated by increasing purchase volume and extending the credit period so instead of 50000 if you take 1 lakh so you get that benefit of 1 lakh working capital and instead of 3 months benefit you say ki i'll be paying after 5 months so you get benefit for the next 5 months bills payable 
wherein the buyer has to give a written promise to pay the amount of invoice at a fixed date in future. So I think it's quite easy to understand. Installment credit. So basically installment credit, you buy an asset and uh, you do not pay the full amount at once and you get to pay in installments. Factoring is accounts receivable financing. So you would be receiving money from a company. You have accounts receivable. So it basically implies raising finance through the sale or mortgage of book, book debts. Finance companies or factors provide finance to business concerns through outright purchase of accounts receivable or against the security of accounts receivable so if i have to receive let's say 5 crore rupees and somebody checks my accounts ki, okay yes i know you will be receiving 5 crore rupees don't worry and today you need money i'll give you so the finance company generally makes advances up to 60 percent of accounts receivable pledged with them the debtors of the firm make payments to it which in turn forward them to the finance company. Sometimes debtors may be required to make payments directly to the finance company. Bad debt losses, if any, are to be borne by the business concern itself. Of course, if I'm the business concern and if bad debt happened, why would the finance company suffer? Basically, finance company gave you the money on the faith. You okay? my money is safe because this fellow would be receiving the money. Outright sale of account receivable is known as factoring. The business concern is relieved of the cost and effort of collecting debts and bad debt losses. But it is an expensive method of financing because accounts receivables have to be sold at a heavy discount. So this is important. Customer advances. I don't think I need to explain this and intercorporate deposits. So when a company borrows funds for a short period, say up to six months from another company which has surplus funds, it is called intercorporate deposit ICD. The ICDs are generally unsecured and are arranged by a financer. These deposits are very convenient and popular because no legal formalities are involved. The identity of the borrower is not disclosed to the public. The rate of interest payable on ICDs varies depending upon the amount involved and the time period. Interest rate payable on ICDs is usually lower than that payable on loans from banks and financial institutions. The entire working of ICD is based upon personal connection between the borrowers, the lenders and the borrowers. ICDs are available only to reputed companies. So dear student, we come to the end of this chapter. Uh, my voice notes would generally help you understand, but to secure marks, you need uh, elaborate reading. You need to practice. Are you able to recall the points? Just mere understanding of the topic is not sufficient in commerce examinations because they do not test much of your concept. They test how much, how well read you are, how much you know about the subject. So please, there is no shortcut in commerce. You need to read and read and read. So all the very best. Take care. Bye-bye.